So, hello everyone. Uh, I'm glad uh, that I'm here to present here uh, the zero towards zero trust architecture today. Uh, I'm glad that uh, I'm presenting this first uh, Kosovo besides uh, uh, Pristina conference. Uh, I'm Shkumin Saneya and uh, I had a chance uh, to present and to participate in many uh, FLOSC events and mainly those that have been like the first one. Uh, in the past, uh, I participated in Software Freedom Day and Software Freedom Conferences organized by FLOSC. Uh, I, at that time, I was the uh, manager or uh, took a leading role uh, to a localization of open, ofi open office uh, in Albanian language. Uh, so, also, I've had the chance to be a, uh, one of pioneers here in Kosovo on implementing open source solutions, mainly intranets, uh, and uh, for uh, government, for mainly for municipalities. Um, and it, it was uh, based on uh, uh, Apache, PHP, uh, MySQL. So there have been f some of the first implementation of open source in government. Uh, uh, otherwise, uh, with security, I got uh, say uh, as an IT. Of course, you got introduced with uh, security. But uh, like uh, 20 years ago, uh, one of my first uh, training on internet and internet security. And once you get into it, you get uh, some kind of paranoia into it, uh, and uh, it uh, f takes you uh, always uh, will, will be uh, like with you. Uh, later on, uh, also I had uh, some say certification on information systems management uh, on ISO 27001 as lead, uh, lead audit implementer and uh, certification so and I'm glad that to and during this journey uh, I had a chance uh, looking for some of the especially like say in governance level like some of the say the uh, of the best solutions or something that will be uh, quite comprehensive and uh, one of such things is zero trust architecture uh, also with our aud audience today uh, for some I see many professionals that uh, some of you things will be tri trivial to you but I see also some students and uh, uh, that I hope that at least one or two things will get out of this uh, presentation uh, or even others uh, to get it and or to refresh their uh, knowledge uh, and uh, practice it. Uh, so, uh, risks uh, on cybersecurity are everywhere. It's, uh, uh, there is anec an anecdotically uh, about a thief a century ago when the police catched him after several times after, after he uh, robbed the banks and uh, they said, hey, why, why the banks? And he said, but because there is the money. And so, even today, like, uh, why the uh, hackers and thieves and uh, bad actors go after the data because there is the money, money today. And uh, the risks are another, in another side are because uh, with uh, we simply uh, uh, want to access our systems and computers and everywhere and uh, with any kind of devices. Uh, so mobile laptops, uh, it's uh, it's a time that I haven't seen in offices rarely like uh, the, the those classical desktops. Mainly I see laptops everywhere. So they take it home, take it so, and they want this kind of freedom. Then, um, and the, the other thing is uh, complexity. All the types of devices, all the, uh, the here there is uh, the number of, uh, number of uh, new vul vulnerabilities and I had uh, uh, Internet of Things devices so which is totally like say relatively new thing and so huge uh, number of vulnerabilities and uh, that based on IBM report also it's here based on IBM data the average cost of data breach uh, it's uh, for those that they have served based on their in, in index report of last year it's 4.24 million US dollars while for 
U.S. companies, it's, nine mil uh, it's uh, above $9 million. Uh, Dollars. So it's, uh, and uh, for example, uh, from IT governance uh, report in March, have been uh, found 88 publicly disclosed security incidents for which account for almost 4 million data records. And that, so for last month, uh, that is like most, say, recent reports, while for this quarter, this uh, of, uh, it have been 75 uh, million. Um, uh, breached records, and that is uh, what is publicly disclo disclosed. And uh, now we know uh, that uh, the number of undisclosed is at least uh, this number of dub or double. And uh, imagine the number of unidentified uh, breaches and incidents. So it's uh, th the risks are everywhere. And uh, so, what was the solution? is that uh, like uh, several years ago, it was uh, at the Jericho Forum in 2004, uh, publicized the idea of uh, deparameterization, uh, limiting the implicit trust based on a, a network. Uh, and the, at uh, John Kinderweg uh, at Forrester Research, uh, have coined or first, uh, say, developed this zero trust model based on uh, seeing that, uh, seeing that uh, uh, the devices and uh, what is happening in network it cannot be trusted anymore. So uh, while there was this saying, or it's still in uh, finance audit, trust but verify. So we are low, but later we see that some, someone behaves bad, then we will cut the access or so on. But uh, no, with this approach, it's like uh, inverse that model, directs uh, uh, IT teams uh, guiding the, the principle that d don't trust a anyone. Uh, we know that uh, traditionally uh, still there are uh, networks uh, that within enterprises and government and elsewhere that, uh, or, uh, that once you see the net network cables, you can plug your uh, device and you will uh, almost be able to see all or to scan the whole network and you will have access to most of it. Uh, but uh, with this approach, so uh, because so once you plug it, because assume that okay, uh, you are one of us and you need uh, legitimate access, so you can uh, you are allowed to uh, to access all those uh, resources. Uh, based on this, uh, say, uh, zero trust, also Google have done, Beyond Corp uh, uh, developed, uh, had some activities. And, uh, uh, but, uh, and also in 2020, the National Institute of Science Technology of U.S. have, uh, developed, have developed or published a special publication on zero trust uh, architecture, which uh, is the core of what I will uh, present the next uh, slides. Uh, uh, there is uh, this uh, picture of uh, what at uh, Kinderwerk uh, at uh, have proposed, seeing that uh, all of the firewalls and uh, wireless gateways and uh, the and uh, database encryption are not sufficient, and to move everything. Uh, 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 actually, to limit the access to all of those uh, within the, some uh, zero trust model. So, here uh, I'll is provided the official uh, uh, definition of that zero trust architecture is an enterprise cyber security architecture that is based on uh, zero trust principles and designed to prevent data breaches and limit internal lateral movement. So. Zero Trust, you heard already from Pranvera in her great uh, presentation. Uh, and uh, so she, <laughs> so uh, you already got the idea. Uh, but uh, the, as you see here, the one of key things that I see here, it's the limit internal uh, lateral movement. As we saw in the previous presentation, the very interesting one, uh, the interesting device and so on. It's uh, with those that uh, really we don't have a chance on security. If it gets into my uh, table, uh, really uh, I will be uh, all my 
uh, say uh, all my protections and uh, bank uh, uh, account and uh, say uh, social media accounts and uh, emails everything everything will be compromised while the idea is that okay i will be compromised with zero trust uh, that it's say not good for me but it's not uh, that shouldn't mean the end of uh, the company as well the idea is that to be limited only on those uh, to say on my computer and my uh, access uh, resources that i have uh, so not to be able to uh, to damage across the uh, to, uh, across the, the enterprise across, across the institution uh, wherever i have access uh, So, uh, Zero Trust, uh, it's a framework, so it's uh, not some kind of uh, product uh, that you can buy off the on the shelf or, uh, or, uh, or that can be d developed. So, it's a framework for securing infrastructure and data uh, with this uh, principle that the organization should not trust any, any enti entity inside or outside. So, it's uh, in their perimeter at any time. So by default, uh, if let's say that I plug uh, my laptop uh, over my computer in the network cable of, uh, of a company, uh, that doesn't mean that I will have access immediately or be be will be able to scan. Uh, but uh, as we will see later, based on uh, uh, access uh, logical access controls, so uh, simply I will not uh, be able to uh, see anything. And so never trust always verify that is like say uh, the main uh, idea or maxim that it's uh, followed through the zero trust uh, uh, network uh, zero trust architecture uh, so uh, and to achieve that is the requires uh, visibility and control over the environment and users and, and traffic and that is all the time uh, so it's uh, set of paradigms that move from static network based uh, to f uh, that focus on users uh, assets and resources and that dynamically uh, and uh, so the three of uh, principles i presented there so never trust always verify assume breach so it's uh, no matter that i'm an employee uh, and have legitimate uh, access and so on uh, still there my access all the time will be monitored and and visible uh, during my activity and implement least privilege uh, we know that uh, so it's to give the minimum needed uh, uh, minimum needed privileges uh, or access uh, uh, or at the banks as they call it need to know basis so only for those if i work at hr i will have access only to HR records or uh, if I work at some uh, let's say that uh, we are a multinational company if I work at Pristina office in Kosovo I will have only those to those records uh, access and not uh, uh, it's not needed I to be to have access to re HR records uh, for my colleagues in Albania and Albania so it's uh, let's say there there is we have an office there so it's uh, uh, implementing least privilege uh, for uh, that is one of uh, say principles that uh, it's uh, being applied uh, at maybe at other levels or uh, business processes but to say also at IT processes uh, uh, that is uh, say at uh, many corporate softwares that is regulated uh, say by rules and uh, uh, roles and groups and uh, but uh, but still we know that uh, the bad actors usually will be able to uh, elevate privileges and uh, through say business processes so what we are uh, what is the zero trust uh, uh, supports it's to uh, to increase it at another uh, another level uh, so zero trust uh, have uh, seven principles presented here so that uh, data source and computers computing services are uh, considered resources uh, so it requires uh, it, it requires that uh, 
all assets uh, be identified, but at a deep level also like uh, which process they are for they are needed, and uh, all our considered resources even uh, even say external bring your own devices so our uh, say phones and uh, whoever access the network resources uh, systems uh, that uh, uh, is considered the resource. All communication is uh, secured regardless of network location, so no matter if uh, I access it from internal network or through externally, uh, no matter if it's that from VPN or uh, uh, with uh, multi-factor authentication and stuff like that, or uh, as, ex as external, uh, let's say that uh, users, internet users of a uh, system. Uh, for all those communications should be uh, should be secured and uh, say uh, possibly with highest uh, uh, so that means basically encrypted but possibly with uh, highest standards uh, access to individual enterprise resource is granted on uh, on peer session basis so that means that for example let's say that with that zero keyboard i get access to company email and stuff like that or at some as HR system as I mentioned as example uh, but uh, I need also some extra I will try to ele elevate my privileges or uh, or uh, for some other reason uh, uh, also that might be uh, let's say that for business pur purposes might be allowed with some uh, with uh, with some authorization but uh, that will be per session basis. So that in that case, that uh, or let's say that uh, it's uh, uh, my account have been hacked or destroyed or whatever. Uh, but uh, uh, so it will be very limited. So it will not be will not have access to let's say or to file server to download a bun, uh, to to download the terabytes of terabytes of data or gigabytes. But per session. The, the idea is to limit the, uh, uh, as the principle assumes the breach, is even if it's that happening, and even if that's happening really, it's to minimize, uh, to minimize the impact. Uh, so access uh, resources that determined by uh, dynamic policy, so there are policies, but those might change based on, uh, you know, on behavior. Let's say that, uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, for example, I access usually, uh, like every day, like 30, 50 HR accounts per day or financial transactions I make. And one day I make 200 uh, uh, transactions or access records. And on a dynamic basis, the policies will identify these issues and will limit uh, the access. Uh, and so that based is based also based on a uh, fifth principle that enterprise monitors measure the integrity and security posture of all uh, owned uh, and associated assets. Uh, the resource authentication and authorization is dynamic and strictly enforced before access is allowed. So it's uh, not uh, any more simple uh, the username and passport, but also with uh, uh, with multi-factor authentication, and uh, as we will see later, possibly with uh, say some enterprise uh, uh, level over the cloud, and uh, enterprise collect as much information possible with current state uh, uh, network infrastructure and as it used to improve its uh, security posture. So it's. Uh, uh, that uh, means that uh, it will not rely only on the, let's say, on uh, current, as we know, for example, let's say, at uh, 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 firewall rules and antivirus uh, definitions and stuff like that, but uh, possibly will uh, evolve with uh, on using uh, with uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence uh, to to learn about the new dynamics, uh, the dynamics on. Our in uh, our resources, our systems. Uh, also, there are six defined uh, view of network uh, with uh, 
th that is uh, this basic uh, assumption that network connectivity f it utilizes zero trust architecture. Uh, so it's uh, they are very much uh, linked with uh, uh, their implementation is linked with uh, uh, principles or seven tenets that's uh, presented uh, uh, before. So uh, third, for example, I like uh, that. Uh, uh, actually, all they are important. Uh, no resource is uh, uh, inherently trusted. So it uh, does mean that, for example, yesterday through this computer, I was a legitimate user. Uh, that uh, today still I will need to authenticate and uh, authenticate and uh, f and uh, again for uh, for legitimate use of the system. So it's, uh, uh, it's not let, uh, hey, save my password and uh, save my session uh, for, like, say, for forever. <laughs> uh, here it's uh, the logical uh, components of the zero trust architecture. This is one of the models that by based on the NIST uh, proposed model. Uh, uh, and uh, the policy engine and uh, policy administrator uh, that makes uh, like the rules that uh, are or the core that will allow the, uh, the system uh, and to allow the legitimate use of uh, to achieve the level of uh, trusted to enterprise resources access and those they are uh, supported by continuous uh, diagnostic mitigation systems uh, industry compliance systems, uh, GDPR, uh, HIPAA, and other uh, different standards. Threat intelligence feeds that will update uh, not based on the current, uh, say, threats, but uh, through the newly detected, uh, uh, say, uh, newly detected uh, breaches and stuff like that will update this information. Activity logs uh, that will be uh, say uh, constantly uh, monitored uh, data access policies based on uh, rules of uh, business uh, cases that will be used uh, cryptography public key infrastructure uh, ID management about uh, users and their ad identities and uh, system information and event management uh, systems that collect the logs and uh, visualizes and as well for uh, for current and for future activities uh, so, uh, migrating to zero trust architecture, mm, currently even globally there are cases where there is a pure zero trust architecture mm, that can be achieved with, say, uh, if it is greenfield of or uh, from the scratch system and uh, with a good uh, design and uh, team, yes. But uh, more, uh, say, common are hybrid uh, zero trust arch architecture and parameter-based arch architectures. So it's uh, that taking uh, elements of uh, uh, zero trust on the current, uh, say, networks uh, to enhance with uh, zero trust elements. Uh, so this, uh, say, I thought that uh, long time was coined uh, only like in recent years have been say well uh, documented also it's uh, say n nowadays as a marketing uh, buzzword is being used by uh, by many companies uh, they are just adding this uh, this product can do uh, zero trust uh, and like <laughs> but elements there are because as we mentioned it's not a product but there are elements that uh, need to uh, to work at all uh, levels. Uh, so it's uh, in uh, migrating to zero trust, uh, assessment is uh, the key. So it requires a lot of uh, preparation. System of inventory, but uh, uh, what devices we have, what they do within these business processes, user inventory, so the users and their roles, and, and the business process review. That is like, I think, uh, the most uh, time-consuming and most critical because uh, uh, the business process when they go through zero trust say because uh, 
many cases, business uh, process are designed with, uh, uh, or uh, also as Teuda mentioned, uh, at the design, it's difficult to design uh, or rarely we see with security in mind all the time at all at at all the points. Uh, so it's uh, business process review to be identified and to then to see the risk assessment for those processes and to start deploying uh, possibly with small processes. HR again, as I mentioned, uh, to, to follow that example, might be like a good candidate for, let's say, to pilot within one unit, let's say for an office at Pristina, but and then to expand the scope and as well within, say, uh, organization to expand with other processes as well. Uh, so, uh, apart from uh, uh, NIST, uh, the CISA have uh, developed, uh, another US ag agency have developed uh, the Z Zero Trust Maturity Model, and uh, that is uh, about identity, devices, network environment, application workload, and data. Uh, I kept the official, their official, uh, to say, uh, oops. Uh, their o official uh, 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 figure, uh, and that uh, is uh, those five pillars are based on visibility, automa automation, uh, orchestration, and the governance. And as I said, the, the official figure, I saw other figures, and which I would prefer more. Uh, that data is uh, at the center. Uh, through all, and I think uh, there where it's uh, and all the uh, other pillars are around uh, around it and of course supported uh, with visibility analytics and other uh, elements yeah and uh, so uh, the zero trust can be evaluated the so the, the there it's a uh, their maturity model from traditional, where many things are uh, uh, manual uh, policies, manual uh, setup of uh, identities, and uh, and uh, management of the data. Uh, then, uh, towards the more advanced, when several processes are automated, automated, and uh, uh, or automatically through, inter let's say, for example. CM and uh, other uh, IPS, IDS systems support uh, the environment. And going towards the uh, optimal where it's continuous uh, validation and continue, uh, many things are automatically uh, through uh, support of ML, artificial intelligence, and for example, newly extended uh, Extended uh, de detection and response uh, platforms. Many challenges are there, uh, but just as Valmir is saying, that uh, I will here highlight only the uh, end user training. Uh, many see that on new policies uh, that should happen if it is with zero trust or no matter if. Uh, if organization have start, want to do the zero trust, so end user trainings and policies that should be continuously in uh, nowadays. So to wrap up, uh, it's the, as I, is there is a picture of uh, the hurdles uh, track. Uh, like if I have to run, and uh, nobody will run through hurdles, but will go all around, all around it. So to go faster. So uh, strength of zero trust is that we'll build uh, strong user identification access uh, policies, segmentation of data and resources, uh, security or orchestration, remote and uh, remote uh, and uh, and office users are treated the same. Uh, limit lateral movements and make make attacks harder. So, like in the second, so uh, second picture. So we want to make them harder, or like if uh, there was a door, another another idea to put the door there with many locks. The idea is that like our organizations, 
our institutions to have as many locks or as many hurdles uh, to to achieve up to our data. So, uh, uh, and they will go elsewhere, but at least we will be uh, protected. Okay, thanks. Uh,